everyone, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to be talking about infant eye exams and what we are looking for when we examine children or specifically babies. So if that interests you, stay tuned. So before we get started, please make sure to comment below and like this video so I know what kind of content to produce for you guys. As you might know, I'm a pediatric ophthalmologist, so I'm a pediatric eye surgeon and I see kids in the eye clinic as well as infants. So I wanted to talk today about the four things that I'm looking for when I examine a baby and what that means. So first of all, all infants do not need a, an eye exam. and that's a worry that most people have. Is it an eye exam like a dental exam? You're supposed to do it every six months or every year for children. That's not true. Your pediatrician is checking the baby right when they're born at that like nursery visit when the pediatrician comes to see you when you're late in the hospital and you've just had your baby. Then also when you're in the pediatrician's office at the one week visit. So what is the pediatrician doing? They're just checking the baseline. They wanna make sure everything looks the way that it should. And if there's a problem, then your pediatrician is going to refer you to a pediatric ophthalmologist like me. So, so basically what a pediatrician uses is this thing. I never use this. It's called a direct ophthalmoscope. They'll use it to check the red reflex and the light and make sure that the alignment looks good. So what am I checking when a baby comes in for an eye exam? First thing I'm doing is checking the alignment of the baby size. And if they are young, like less than three months old, we're really not gonna to see too much, but typically I'm gonna use lights and toys and just get the baby to follow these objects and, and track their movements. And again, unless the baby's about three or four months old, you're really not gonna see it. What you'll see instead is blinking to light. And that's a sign too, that's telling me that the visual pathways are okay. So I'll shine a bright light if the, if the baby blinks, if they you know, are, are moving around, then, then I know that at least some of that light is getting in. We can't be more exact than that when I'm seeing a baby at one month or two months old. And remember, this is for babies that are term, so 37 or 38 to 40 weeks gestational age. Premature babies are a totally different thing, um, but for now, so we are checking the fixation movement of the eyes. When babies are older, three to four months of age, then they really can start tracking. And so we call it fix and follow or central, steady, and maintained. So the baby's looking at a toy as I pull it you know, across their, their vision. And I check each eye individually to see if there's any preference for one eye over another. That actually can give us a good bit of information. So that's the first. The second thing that I'm checking is the alignment of the eyes. So I am checking to see if the eyes look like they're crossed in, if they're wandering out, if there's any kind of vertical deviation. And oftentimes I, I use a lot of toys with lights. So I'll use a light and as long as the light is centered perfectly well in the middle of the pupil, like don't be fooled by the white of the eye. The skin of the nose can cover more of the white on each side of the eye, fooling you into thinking that the eye is crossed in when it really isn't. So what you wanna look at is the pupil. And if you pinch and zoom on your iPhone photos, make sure you're using a flash and make sure that your child is looking straight at the camera. If they're a little bit off axis, you're gonna think that this eye is, is um, crossed in when it really isn't. The other thing I do is something called cover on cover. So I will use an occluder and cover one eye, show this object, and then cover the other eye. It, that's what I'm doing, back and forth between the eyes. If there is any issues with alignment, meaning if the eyes are crossed in or if they're wandering out, I will see a deviation. I'll see a movement, a shifting movement of the eyes and that's gonna tell me there's something that going on with, with the baby. It is a myth that babies should have cross eyes. If it's past about four to six months of age and we see any kind of cross eyes, that's something that needs a referral to a pediatric ophthalmologist like myself. Don't think that that's a normal thing. Um, if it's before that first three to four months when they're still developing their vision, that can be fine. Um, but again, get your pediatrician to get you a referral to a pediatric ophthalmologist. It's always better to be safe. The third thing that I do is I check the prescription of the baby's eyes. Now, I know that sounds weird. Like, how can you tell if a baby is nearsighted or farsighted or has astigmatism? That's the whole reason we put those dilating eye drops into baby's eyes. And that just makes the pupil big and it paralyzes their focusing muscles. And then I can use an instrument, which is basically checks to see, I can use it to go in through the light. I can use an instrument, which 
looks through the open pupil, which is now paralyzed, so it's really big, like opening a window, really wide open, and then I put a bunch of different lenses in front of, um, of the baby, and with that I can neutralize the way that reflection is coming back at me, and that's how I can calculate if a baby is nearsighted, farsighted, or has astigmatism. It seems crazy for people to realize that. But if you go to the eye doctor, they put your head in this little machine and they do like this little machine test and they come up with a number and then they fine tune it with the whole one tube. But that machine test, I'm just doing it by hand and it's called a cycloplegic refraction. So that's the third thing I'm checking because you can tell even a baby that's six or eight months or nine months old might need glasses and I have done that, especially if they're preemie, then they're a little bit more at risk for needing glasses. So or if they have an asymmetry between the two eyes, one eye is perfectly normal and the other eye is really farsighted or nearsighted, then we need to do something, either glasses or patching. So that's really key component of a infant eye exam, especially if um, the baby was referred to me that for an issue. So that's why I always tell parents, I have to put the dilating drops. I can't get a full um, check of the health of the baby's eyes unless I put the dilating drops in the eyes. And then the fourth thing that I'm checking, which also needs those dilating eye drops, is I'm checking the inside of the eye, the health of the inside of the eye. So with the light, I can check the outside structures, the eyelids, the eyelashes, the white part, the conjunctiva. Once the pupil is dilated, opening it up like a big old window instead of looking through a narrow keyhole, I use something called an indirect ophthalmoscope, which sits on my head and a special lens. And for that, I can focus the light through the pupil and actually check inside the eye, um, looking at the retina, looking at the optic nerve, looking at the macula, everything to make sure that the eyes are healthy. And we can pick up things. I've picked up infections, intrauterine infections like toxoplasmosis. I've picked up congenital atrophies of the optic nerve. We picked up swelling of the optic nerve from a brain tumor. So there's a lot of different things that we can I can see um, from that examination of the retina. It's called a dilated fundus examination. And again, it's really important, you know, if the baby's not being referred, do, do all children need this? Absolutely not. But is it a good thing for me to do? Yes, because that's why they're being referred as for a full eye exam and I can't do it otherwise. So those are the four things that I check in an infant um, younger than 12 months of age. Like I said, not every baby needs a full comprehensive eye exam as done by a pediatric ophthalmologist. The pediatricians really are checking all the baseline things and only if there's an issue are they going to refer you to see someone like me. So I hope that was helpful. If you liked this, please subscribe below and hit like. That's what my daughter always says. Yeah, is that what I say? <laughs> if you like it, subscribe below and comment that you do. And I uh, hope you're having a great day. Mahalo. Make sure you subscribe our channel and push the bell button. Bye. What's the bell button? Is that a button? Yeah. Oh, okay. She knows more about this than me. Thanks. I do YouTube videos all the time. <laughs> Thanks for watching.